Welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. Hi, I'm Bart Morick, HBM Applications Engineer, and in this video I'm going to provide a short presentation on configuring two Genesis high-speed mainframes into a master-slave configuration for those times when you need a distributed data acquisition system or simply need additional channels. Every Genesis high-speed mainframe currently in production has the capability of performing as a master or slave working together in an extended system without adding any additional hardware. There is an optical master-slave port that supports the Gen Series master-slave extended synchronization protocols and is fully backward compatible with older systems. The single synchronization connector allows for the direct connections of one slave to the frame or to be a slave within any master-slave multi-mainframe connection. Over the next few minutes I'm going to show you how to quickly connect two frames together in a single master-slave configuration. In this instance we'll be using two Gen 3i mainframes. A Gen 3i is a data acquisition system with three recorder slots with an integrated PC. In a normal situation, the 3i would be a standalone system that would record your data controlled by an embedded version of perception software. In this instance, we're going to take two Gen 3i units, connect them in a master-slave configuration with a single instance of perception controlling both systems and recording data on the master. Initially, a Gen 3i will automatically boot up and launch perception on its own and act as a standalone system. To start the process, both systems network connections should be set to an auto IP, but if they are set to a value in the same range, it will work as well. The cabling to perform the master-slave setup should be done before powering the units up. The initial connection is simple, a fiber optic cable to connect the master-slave ports to each other. The cable used is a 850 nanometer multi-mode cable that has an optical data rate of 2 gigabits per second and a maximum length of 500 meters with duplex LC connectors that is automatically corrected for any propagation delay within the system. A network cable is required to connect the two PTPE enabled Ethernet ports to each other. The system comes standard with a copper RJ45 Ethernet port and you can use that to communicate with each system or obtain an appropriate SFP module to plug into the optical PTP port for communication if the distance between the two frames is too far apart for copper. The optical Ethernet port will support either a single or multi-mode fiber. You just need to make certain that both have the same style port. You can then launch perception on the master and configure the master slave setup. To help perception find the master and slave systems, you'll need to determine in advance which system is which. After that is accomplished, you'll need to network the two mainframes together so that they can be seen by each other. In the case of the Gen 3i, there's an embedded PC in the system operating under Windows that allows for quick and easy control panel network adjustment to make certain the PTP enabled ports are either both set to auto IP or in the same range. You'll need either a direct connection between the two copper or optical PTP enabled ports on top of the system or through a hub. From within Windows, set both systems to either an auto IP or set them to a dedicated IP address within the same range. The two frames will need a fiber optic master slave cable to run between them for transfer of data, commands, and synchronization. The length of the cable can be up to 500 meters. Once the physical connections are made, you can begin your final preparations. Turn both systems on. If perception auto launches on both frames, exit from the application on the slave unit. Following, we're going to have a short video where we make the perception setups required. This video is taken from the viewpoint of the master. Once the network and master-slave connections are made, you can launch perception on your master mainframe. Various acquisition modes can be selected, but for the purposes of this test, we will choose continuous mode. We have chosen auto configure and reset hardware selection to ensure that all the hardware in the system is set to a factory default. If your network connections are proper, you will see a message notifying you of the mainframes that are available for you to connect to. The internal hardware is the default choice, but you should be able to see the proposed slave unit as well. 
Once the initial connections are made, we can go into the settings to configure the systems to operate as a master or slave unit. Notice in the hardware tab the internal frame and the slave unit. Pull down on settings, general, mainframe. Change the master slave mode to the appropriate setting for each system. You will see a momentary notification that the system clock is being resynchronized. In this instance, we're going to change the sync source from to PTP1 RJ45, but it is not absolutely necessary in all instances. The systems will begin to sync themselves together. From here, advanced settings can be accessed so you can get greater detail on your Gen high speed hardware. Once the slave unit has been controlled by a master, you can easily switch the system back to a standalone system. After rebooting the slave unit or launching perception, a pop-up will come up and give you a notification that lets you know that the system has previously been controlled by either another PC running perception or another Genesis integrated mainframe and that the automatic perception startup has been disabled. And there you have it, a quick setup to allow you to master slave multiple Gen high speed systems together. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call, email, or visit our website for the latest product solutions and downloads at www.hbm.com.